Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to perform the short time Fourier analysis in GNU Octave, also called short time Fourier transform. Really powerful tool in digital signal processing. Remember, the short time uh, the Fourier transform is transforming a time domain signal to the frequency domain. And then we are able to see the different frequency components inside our time domain signal. But we are not able to, to see uh, what happened at a certain uh, time step. So we are not able to see uh, which frequency component occurred at a certain time step. The short time Fourier analysis is able to give us this information. In general, the uh, short time Fourier analysis is splitting our signal into smaller pieces, calculating the Fourier transform for each of these uh, uh, smaller pieces and then stacking them together and the output will be an image giving us the information what happened in the frequency domain over time. And let's demonstrate it with a small example. So let's directly head over to our workspace and closing all maybe open plot windows, clearing all maybe set variables and clearing our command window. Because we're in the digital domain, we create an arbitrary sampling frequency of for example 80 kilohertz. And now we need a signal that changes its frequency over time that we can see, okay, at different time, time steps, we have different frequency components. And therefore we uh, use the chirp. The chirp, as all, um, mentioned in the previous videos, is a signal that linearly increases, for example, its frequency from a start frequency to a stop frequency, let's say from zero hertz to 30 kilohertz. And the time that uh, the chirp needs to increase its frequency uh, will be, for example, one second. So to create a chirp, we have to create a time domain vector uh, starting at zero with an increment of one divided by the sampling frequency. And the overall length of the chirp will be t chirp, one second. And we subtract here one sample because we go from zero to n minus one. And then we create our chirp using the sine function, two times pi, two times pi, times our start frequency times t which is a, a cw signal and now we add the frequency modulation covering a bandwidth of f stop minus f start so our 30 kilohertz and the increase in frequency will have a slope of uh, f stop minus f start divided by two times the chirp duration t chirp times our time domain vector to the power of Two. Let's fire it up to see if we have made any errors. Yes, we have made an error. F stop was not set because I named it F start. So now we've created a chirp. So now let's have a look at the frequency spectrum of the chirp using the FFT, the Fourier transform. The, uh, the length of the FFT will be the length of the signal itself of the chirp because we want to cover the whole chirp. And for the plot, of the spectrum we create a frequency vector which goes from minus half the sampling frequency up to half of the sampling frequency because this is what the uh, uh, FFT is uh, calculating us. Uh, so times FS divided by an FFT. So now this vector F goes from minus 40 kilohertz up to 40 kilohertz minus half the sampling rate up to half of the sampling rate and now let's create our frequency domain signal x capital letter using the fft command and we have to pass our time domain signal x small x and the length of the fft so and now we can plot our frequency domain spectrum by, by being a plot and we plot against frequency frequency against our vector x but the output of the FFT command will be uh, the samples of the FFT will be arranged in, the, in a way that we have the positive and then the negative frequencies. And for our plot, we want to rearrange the vectors that the uh, uh, negative frequencies are on the left side of the plot. Therefore, we use the FFT shift command. This is uh, the FFT shift command is just rearranging our vector and we are plotting our signals in decibels. So 20 times the logarithm base 10 absolute value of the signal because the output of the FFT is a complex signal that com are complex values then we name the axis X label will be frequency frequency in Hertz 
and the y-axis will be labeled with amplitude in decibels amplitude in db amplitude in db we turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer and we give a title to the to the figure um, frequency spectrum so now let's fire it up to see what happened so i will show you the, the result okay so here we have our frequency um, domain representation of our generated chirp we have a double-sided spectrum because we have created a real value chirp using the sine or cosine function uh, if we would use the exponential function creating a complex chirp we only would have a single-sided spectrum but a, a real valued signal has a symmetrical spectrum but um, anyway let's focus on one side of the spectrum we see we have a signal starting from 0 Hertz up to 30 kilohertz as desired on the x-axis we see our frequency axis from minus half the sampling rate minus 40 okay up to 40k half the sampling rate and we have the amplitude in db so now we see we have a signal covering a bandwidth of um, from 0 to 30 kilohertz but we are not able to see uh, what happened at a certain time step because as i mentioned the chirp is linearly increasing its frequency over time so at um, every time step we do not have the the full bandwidth of 30 kilohertz at every time step we have only a single frequency and over time we are covering the bandwidth of 30 kilohertz and to display this information that we only have a certain frequency component at the at the certain time step uh, we cannot use the um, uh, FFT plot here we have to use the short time Fourier analysis because the short time Fourier analysis divides our overall signal into smaller pieces and calculates the FFT of the smaller pieces and then for sure um, we will see uh, because we only look at the smaller uh, time range uh, what's going on inside that um, uh, smaller vector and this will give us more information what's happening over time and so let's uh, go back to our workspace and we will load the signal processing package from octave by typing package load signal because inside the signal processing package there is a function called spectrogram which is calculating the short time Fourier analysis or short time Fourier transform and um, we want to plot the result so we create a figure and then we call the function specgram, which is inside the signal processing package. And the specgram, spectrogram function, uh, wants um, this time domain signal X. And um, as I said, the, the spectrogram function or the um, uh, short time Fourier transform uh, divides our overall signal X into smaller pieces on small chunks. Um, we have to define the length of these small sub vectors. Let's say each of the sub vectors should have a length of 265 samples. And then we also have to pass our sampling frequency to the spectrogram function that the frequency axis can be scaled. So if we have a look, our overall signal length in samples of our signal X is 80,000. If we now divide this uh, 80,000 sample signal into pieces of uh, 265 samples we will end up with 312 um, uh, um, uh, different signals or different vectors and then the spectrogram function is calculating the Fourier transform for each of these 312 sub vectors and arranging the output which is uh, 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 frequent uh, uh, FFT output in rows and the overall output will be an image indicating us for a certain time step the frequency content of this small piece of a length of 265 samples so the output will be image one axis will be our time x label time in seconds and our y axis will be our frequency frequency in Hertz we turn on the grid and we give a title so let's say short time 
Fourier. Fourier analysis. So, okay. So the output will be an image. X axis will be the time. Y axis will be the frequency. And because it's the image, there are different colors in it and the colors are indicating us the amplitude. And so now let's fire it up to see if we have made any errors and I will show you the output. Here it is, here we have our short time Fourier analysis of our generated chirp. So some explanation. Again, X axis is our time domain axis. Remember, we've created a chirp that linearly increases its frequency over time from uh, time step zero up to one second. And the frequency will be or is increased linearly from zero hertz up to 30 kilohertz that you can see here. So, and what you can see here now is that it's happening that at every time step we have a different frequency component. Let's say at um, 0 0.2 seconds, we have a, a single frequency component of um, 6 kilohertz. At the timestamp of uh, 0 0.6 seconds, we have a, a single frequency component of 80 kilohertz, 18 kilohertz, and so on. And at one second, we have a single frequency component of 30 kilohertz. Compared to our FFT plot, where we just saw, okay, we have a uh, a signal that is covering a bandwidth of 30 ki of 30 kilohertz uh, there we have not been able to distinguish what was happening at the certain time step because there are signals that um, cover a whole frequency bandwidth at every single time step and this is not the case for the chirp here the frequency changes over time and now we are able to display this change over time using the short time Fourier analysis and as you can see we have here um, these steps and we can uh, get a higher resolution by decreasing our our sub signal length which was set to 265 samples or by overlapping adjacent um, uh, uh, sub vectors but anyway you should now be able to to see okay using the short time Fourier analysis we can display what's going on in the frequency spectrum over time Using the FFT plot, we are not able to see what's going on in the frequency domain over time. We are only we only can display the overall frequency cont content of our signal. So that's it. Um, thank you again for watching. I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up, and then we see us the next time. Bye bye.